Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Toughest loss of the season so far for the Yankees last night. And I haven't listened to the voicemails yet, but I'm sure they're all going to be extremely reasonable. I don't think so. Hi, Derek. This is Dennis from uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, the Yankees aren't going to win the World Series with Boone as a manager. I mean, uh, they can all the streaks they want. He'll lose more games than they'll win. Lose more games than they win? Are you serious? They haven't had a losing record since the early 90s. Yeah, they lost a tough game last night, but they're coming off a seven-game win streak. They got the best record in the American League. Can we learn to watch a baseball season, please? Can we learn that every closer is going to blow a game once in a while? And sometimes it happens quickly. And it wasn't like Holmes was getting shellacked out there. He gave up some soft hits. Last night was truly an unlucky performance for Clay Holmes. And he can't put that on Boone. Yeah, maybe he could have stuck with Weaver, but he didn't know that that Holmes was going to struggle. And he could have pulled Holmes after, you know, a couple of bad batters, but you don't do that. You got to let him work through it. He's been cardiac clay for a reason. He works himself into trouble and then he gets out of it. Come on, let's get better with the takes. That was uh, that one hurt last night. Um, that was a, that was a bad loss. I don't know. Um, I think um, two things that stood out to me was um, Graber Torres once again, you know, um, flubbing the throw to first base. Um, people were talking that Rizzo should have caught that ball. Rizzo's got his foot on the bag, and the ball bounced about 10 feet in front of him. Appreciate the call. Your voicemail kind of cut off a little bit after that sentence, so I'm just going to take that part and talk about it. Glaber Torres has been atrocious this year, and I couldn't have been more wrong about Glaber Torres. I thought going into a contract year and the way he played in spring training that he was set to have maybe a career year, you know, maybe hit 300, maybe hit 30 home runs again, but he has been absolute dog shit, both sides of the ball. And I'm not sure how much longer the Yankees can put up with it. They don't have a ton of better options. I mean, you got Oswaldo Cabrera, who's played pretty well, but he's not exactly tearing the cover off the ball. He's got about a 700 OPS. You got Oswald Peraza, who is in AAA. He just got optioned after his rehab assignment. Maybe if he gets hot, you put him up there, but I can't see the Yankees ditching Gleyber Torres yet unless they trade him. And I don't know who's going to trade for a guy who's playing this bad on both sides of the ball in their contract year. Yankees are between a rock and a hard place at second base. And look, you're never going to have a team where everything is perfect all the time. But we got to get better performance out of Gleyber Torres because he's too important to the team. And he's just been awful. Not only the errors, you can forgive the occasional physical error the occasional bad throw or the occasional strikeout or whatever but mentally he's been awful he's been terrible on the bases i don't care what stat cast says about him being an above average base runner to me he's one of the worst base runners i've ever seen in my life and i've been watching baseball since 1987 so yeah yankees gotta look into what they can do about this situation maybe it's just getting like a a mental coach for glaber torres or maybe it's just trading him i don't know but they gotta do something Hey, Derek, this is Dylan from Syracuse calling again. I just wanted to remind Yankees fans that that game was not on Clay Holmes. You're not going to have zero ERA all year. It's not going to happen. It's been a fine closer. Would we like to upgrade? Yeah, we would love to upgrade, but we got Holmes for another year. What I'm more concerned about is the Yankees saying that DJ LeMayu is their starting third baseman when he's obviously not the same DJ we're used to. A 34-year-old birdie would probably play better than whatever. I'm not even sure how old DJ is. He's got to be close to that as well. DJ LeMayhew is 35 years old. He will turn 36 on July 13th. So for all intents and purposes, he's 36. I'm also a little bit skeptical about DJ LeMayhew, given what we've seen the last few years. Yeah, he played better in the second half last season, but his first half, he looked completely done. I'm going to give him, once he comes back, about 10 days. You got 10 days to show me what you got. After that, it's an open competition because Birdie has been playing pretty well. He's picking up hits. He's running the bases, although he got thrown out last night. And I think he does a pretty nice job at third base. Could the throws be a little bit more accurate? Sure. But DJ LeMahieu is at the point in his career where he really should be a role player. He should be winding down his career, but 
he signed for a couple more years. So the Yankees want to get max value out of him. I'm just not sure that there's a lot of value to be had at this point. And he's had difficulty staying healthy with the feet and so forth. So I'm a little skeptical. Quick word from Odds Jam, then more voicemails. Looking to boost your sports betting game? Meet Odds Jam, the ultimate ally for data-driven wagering. With 260 plus sports books, it's your go-to platform. Here's how it works. Odds Jam's arbitrage tool spots differences in betting lines, letting you lock in risk-free profits. Plus, optimize bets with a positive EV calculator and track profits with a convenient bet tracker. Try it risk-free with a seven-day trial. Use code RECAPS for 35% off your first month. Link is in the description. Bet smart, bet responsibly with Odds Jam. Hi, Derek. Simon Rosenthal from Bella Vista in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, what the heck is Clay Holmes doing, man? I mean, Marcus Stroman pitched a, a good game, and we scored some runs, and then in the ninth inning, everything falls apart. And what is with Chuck Knobloch Jr., Glaber Torres, making errors here? I mean, this is ridiculous. we got to get DJ LeMay back. It's funny, the diversity of opinions. So first of all, Clay Holmes was not trying to blow the game. I mean, it, it just happens. Every closer is going to blow games once in a while. I liked your quip about Chuck Knobloch Jr. Anybody who remembers those late 90s teams can remember how much of a heart attack it was every time a ground ball got hit to Chuck Knobloch. He hit Keith Olbermann's mom in the face with a ground ball. She was hitting it about the fourth row. It was absolutely awful. He would miss first base by 30 or 40 feet. I've never seen anything like that. I mean, it wasn't yips. It was like yips on steroids. Anyway, um, you know... As far as DJ LeMahieu, I don't think he's a second baseman anymore. you got to have a lot more mobility to play second base at this point in your career. And he's going to be playing third base, according to the Yankees. So, Yankees are stuck with Labor Torres. Let's just hope that he can pull his head out of his ass at some point this season. That would be nice. Hey, Derek Chain. Say, if the magic genie, and remember when I say this, I live six hours drive time from the baseball field in Seattle. So... That's where I've seen the Yankees the most. If the magic baseball genie rock and fire were to visit 100 Mariner fans, 84 of them would pick the May 20th game over having a World Series champion. So that yesterday's game has made the Mariners fans years. The most unknowledgeable baseball fans that I know our Mariner fans. Well, tell us how you really feel, Chain. I only know one Mariners fan, uh, and he is not, let's say, the smartest baseball mind. But to be fair, they haven't done a lot of winning, so there's no reason for them to really ever get that hyped about baseball. Uh, but I will say this. They worship their Seahawks. They really do worship the football team up there. Minus Cece, truly, minus Cece, he might be the only other one. The energy that Stroman has when he came off that mound was just awesome to see. It, it really was. And it's cool to see all the pitchers getting into each other's starts and stuff now. I, I just think it's really interesting, the energy and vibe. Everyone talks about Verdugo and what he's kind of done for the uh, offensive side. I think Stroman's brought... Um, you know, a, a certain type of competitive edge for the pitching staff. That's a great point. I mean, he is one of the guys that feeds off of the energy of the stadium. I think Luis Heal is one of those guys. Also it helps when you're striking out a ton of guys. But Stroman does it with just his general presence. And when he has a great start, uh, he's not afraid to, you know, amp up the crowd and throw up his arms and stuff like that like he did last night. And I personally love it. It's entertainment after all. So I know some people don't like, um, you know, the showmanship or whatever, but I think it's fantastic. All right, everybody, we'll see you after tonight's game. Yankees trying to get back to their winning ways. I'll see you next time.